Hello, grade 10s. In this lesson, we will learn to write repeated multiplication in exponential form and discover the power of exponential growth. Let's start by joining Dumsani as he looks at fractals. Can you believe this amazing pattern is created using mathematics? This twisted shape is called a fractal. And look at this. When we zoom in, it resembles our original pattern, yet another fractal. Fractals are figures with an infinite amount of detail. They are everywhere, these bright, weird, beautiful shapes called fractals. Nature creates its own fractals. One fern leaf is repeated again and again to form the shape of a whole plant. Even when a woman's hair is braided, we can see fractals appearing. Look how they increase from the tip to her head, every time each braid getting increasingly bigger. Now that you know what fractals are, let's see what they've got to do with exponents, if anything. Dumsani has asked what fractals have to do with exponents. We'll investigate this with him by recreating the fractal we just saw. This triangular shape is a famous pattern called the Sapinski Triangle. Let's join Dumsani as he looks at it in more detail. We will call our first triangle stage zero. As you can see, at stage zero, we have only one triangle for pointing upwards. For our next stage, let's join the midpoints of each side of the big triangle. That's one, that's two, and three. Let's see what happens. Now, there are three triangles pointing up. As you can see on our table, at stage one, now we have three triangles. At stage two, midpoints of each side of the three new triangles are joined, and we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine triangles. At stage two, we have now three times three, which gives us nine triangles. Do you see what pattern we are making? What do you think will happen in stage three? How many triangles do you think we'll make? If you count this carefully, you should get 27 triangles. And what about stage four? After this, it gets rather small to draw. So let's look for a pattern to help us predict how many triangles there will be at each stage. At stage three, we had 27, and we know 27 is three times three times three. Stage four, we had four threes, whereby it gave us eight to one. Now in stage five, we're going to have actually five threes. So how can you do it? We can say eight to one multiplied by three, which will give us 243. So does the number pattern make it clearer? Each time the stage increases by one, the number of triangles pointing up is multiplied by three. They become three times more. This fractal pattern continues to infinity. We can keep making the triangle three times more in our minds. So at the sixth stage, we'll have three multiplied by three, multiplied by three, multiplied by three. It will have to be six times. That will be the same as, remember in stage five, we had 243. That means we can multiply that by 3, which will give us 729. Can you use this pattern to predict how many triangles pointing up there will be in stage 9? One way is to multiply 3 by itself 9 times, right? Another way is to multiply 8 to 1 by 243. Why can we do that? Well, 3 multiplied by itself 9 times will be the same as 3 times 3 times 3, 4 times, multiplied by 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 5 times. Well, from our table, we know that 3 multiply itself 4 times gives us 8 to 1, which means here we can write 8 to 1 
multiplied by, and from our table again we know that 3 multiplied itself well, 5 times gives us 243. So let me see here we'll have 243. If you multiply the 281 times 243 will give us 19,683. Wow, that is a lot of triangles. It is time to look for a shorter way to write all the repeated multiplication. Let me show you the correct mathematical way. Three times three will give us three to the power of two. Three times three times three will be equals to three to the power three. Well, can you carry on? How can you write three times three times three times three in a short way, like this? Three to the power of four. Let us recap. We'll learn a new notation in this lesson. A short way to write a number, multiply it by itself many times. What does the 2 stand for? It is the number that has to be multiplied. And what does the 10 stand for? It tells us how many times the 2 has to multiply itself. This is a much easier way than to write 2 10 times, don't you think? Now, how do we read this? In other words, how do we say this in words? We say 2 to the power 10. Let's try again, 2 to the power of 10. 2 to the power of 10 is called a power. The 2 and the 10 also have names. The 2 is called the base, and the 10 is called the exponent. What is 2 to the power 10? So what is 2 multiplied by itself 10 times? Let us look at the sequence or row of numbers as they grow. 2 times 2 gives you 4. 4 times 2 gives you 8. 8 times 2 gives you 16. So if we continue multiplying by 2 each time, then the sequence will look like this. 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, and our final answer will be 1024. Could you see the numbers doubled every time? In the beginning, the numbers grew quite slowly, but then towards the end, the numbers got bigger quite quickly. We call this exponential growth. That was interesting. Now let us do this on a calculator. We use the highlighted power button on the calculator to work out 2 to the power of 10. Press 2, then the power button, and enter the number 10, then press equals. And we will get an answer of 1024. Remember to try the task video at the end of this section. You'll also be able to learn more about exponents on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for joining us, Great Tens.